I'd like to throw a little colorization, uh, maybe a little uh, paradigm into this thing with angels and father and how it is uh, speaking to and inviting us into maturity. Maturity as sons, maturity as sons and daughters. Uh, think of Jesus. He came and of course, uh, we were scared of the Father. Uh, we didn't even know God as Father. Jesus is the one who introduced Jesus, uh, introduced God as Father because God was scary. And, you know, he caused the earth to open up and swallow up 30,000 or whatever. You know, this was, a, this was a scary God. And so Father says, you know what? Uh, I'm going to send Jesus to win your hearts. So Jesus was God with skin on. And it's the only way we could <clears throat> begin to have relationship with a God that seemed so scary. Now we have a God who's manifest in human form, and he does good things for us. He meets us at our felt need. As Emmy pointed out while ago, I'm thirsty. Wah, 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 I want a drink. And Jesus came and met us at our drink need, our need for drink. He went to the cupboard, got the cup, went to the faucet, got the water, handed it to us and helped us so we didn't dribble too much down our shirt. He was a good God. Jesus was super. He was the only way to the Father. We had to come through him to get there. Now, the crazy thing is, at the end of Jesus' ministry, he says, Now, I want to give you something better. It's better that I leave. I'm going to give you something better than me. Now, that just, uh, that just does not sound right. Jesus, what are you talking about? You're the only way to the Father. You said everybody's got to come through you. And now you say that we can uh, have, there's a better way? Yep, it's called Holy Spirit. Now, what I'm wanting to do here is build a precedent. Build a precedent. The precedent is that, John, uh, that God does change. His character doesn't change. His nature doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever in his character and nature. But his emphasis changes. His wholesale grace outpourings from heaven change over time. We know that. That's easy. Judaism was God's emphasis in the Old Testament. Actually, only during uh, a 2,000 year, um, uh, roughly a 2,000 year period. And then he changed completely to the new covenant. And Jesus now institutes, teaches on access to the Father through him. Then, only 33 years later, God changes everything again, says, I'm going to give you Holy Spirit. Oh my gosh, it took 2,000 years for the one emphasis. Now it takes 33 years for a new emphasis. My gosh, God, you know, but he's building something. He's constructing something in us, a belief system that we don't build on religion. We build on a vital, vibrant relationship with Father. And we go with him through those time periods. Now, for roughly 2,000 years, we've been in a holding pattern, what most of us call the church age. And so we have tried to promulgate the teachings of the uh, church, uh, salvation, even baptism of the Holy Spirit. We lost it largely through the Dark Ages, but in the last 200 to 300 years, it's been gained back. We've gained back much of what we lost. And so now it's becoming very real to us again. I maintain that God is doing, and I think we all agree, I maintain that God is doing a very new emphasis. And he's doing what Jesus said in John 16, and Owen referenced it a while ago, that we now, having learned the personality and the heart of Father, we're learning we can go directly to the Father, just like Jesus does. Will we love Jesus? We will always love Jesus. We, if, if there's sin, it always has to go through the cross. Never will that change, as far as I know. That will always be our entryway 
But I don't know that Jesus ever said that he was the end all. In fact, he said, I'm going to point you to the Father. And that in that day, you will go directly to the Father. You will not pray in my name. And if you do pray in my name, I'm not saying I will pray the Father for you. Wow, that's crazy. Now let me tie in a couple more things. Some of us, many of us know the name Ron Jones. Ron Jones, a friend of Dr. O, kind of one, his, one of his mentees. And uh, Ron Jones is a house of fire. He's a, a fire hose of revelation. And he, he maintains that when Jesus said, you shall do greater things than I, that one of those definitions or interpretations of greater things is that we will go straight to the Father. We will know what it is. Uh, let me back up. We will know the magnitude of our identity in God. We will know the magnitude of our identity in Father's eyes. We will know the magnitude of wealth of uh spiritual richness that we possess and that we have potential of walking in that has largely been hidden from us because we've been basically just earthly humans trying to get a God to come help us. We didn't know that we carried the glory of God in us at this very moment. We did not know, even though we had the correct theology when we said Christ in us, the hope of glory, even though we had the correct theology that says we're seated with Christ, we did not know the reality of what that meant. And so we live largely apart at a distance, even though we had good theology. So I believe that God has looked around and he's saying, Jesus, I think it's time that you reveal the Father. Reveal me to them. There's two verses I think I put in one of your last emails. Jesus says, no man knows the Father except the Son. No one knows the Son except the Father. Then he goes on to say, but no one knows the Father except for those that I reveal the Father to. Twice that's mentioned in the Gospels. I think that Jesus watches us. And he, he watches over the stirrings, the posturings, the musings of our heart. And he says, oh, you're getting comfortable with me. And you're getting to understand that if you've seen me, you've also seen the Father. Wow, you've also seen the Father. And so Jesus says, you know what? It's time. I'm going to pull back the curtains. I'm going to open the door. Hey, come on in to the age of the Father. The age of the Father. Now, I don't know if that's what this age is going to be called. Like uh, Owen says, you know, we've all called it basically the kingdom age. Is it going to be the angelic age? Is it going to be the glory of God age? Is it going to be the sons of God age? I don't know. It could be called the, the age of the Father. When Father God is opened up to us and our hearts are so entrenched, so anchored in devotion and allegiance and loyalty to the Godhead, that some shiny new squirrel, a shiny new object, or some fancy heavenly squirrel, like an angel, even though it is truly wonderful to behold, it will not compromise our loyalty and love for Father, while at the same time, we'll find ourselves able to freely move into discovery and even partnership, even BFF with angelic and saints of the heavenly host. So there's my kind of my, my big picture, at least as big as it gets at this point. Okay, since you said it, I have it pulled up here. I got to read, this is going to disturb you. 
<laughs> well, not us, because we're the choir. But, Joe, if you say this, you're going to be in trouble. You're going to be an iconoclast. <laughs> this is Hebrews 6, 1 through 3. Now look at this first phrase. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. Oh, oh, that is a troublemaker right there. Just unpack that. I mean, everything's been about Christ. And he says, we want to leave the doctrines of Christ. Now, you know, just every, we're grown up here, so we're not, you know, creating some new doctrines, but that'll disturb you. <laughs> Let us go on into perfection, Chuck, not laying again the foundation of the print, uh, repentance from dead works. We, re we referenced that a while ago. Repentance, repentance, repentance. Not laying that again. Let's move on. And of faith towards God. That's another one we got to leave behind. <laughs> now, in other words, not leave it behind, but not have to lay that foundation again. Then, of doctrines of baptisms, and of laying on of hands, and of resurrection of the dead. What? Resurrection of the dead is elementary? <laughs> but he says then, uh, oh, and of eternal judgment. Okay, end of sentence. Then here's the last one he says, and this we will do if God permits. I don't know that Paul, he was on to something. He was on to something. He was, he was like, my heart yearns. It yearns to get beyond the baby pablum, beyond the Gerber baby food. I want to move into the stuff that my mature heart now needs in order, in order to nurture it. So I don't know if that grabs you like it grabs me, but that's my heart. You know, it's just, and I think that's all of our hearts. I know it is. We want to move on into the stuff that is more appropriately fitted for our maturity level at where we're at at this time. I feel like the Lord, this kind of recap, is uh, inviting us, entreating us into a union with him that, uh, huh. and this is going to take a while, but it's uh, weaning from religion while at the same time loving every heart all along the journey from the pre-Christians to the newbies to the seasoned. And so that's going to be a little bit of a challenge for us because, uh, you know, whatever we're into, that's kind of the hottest, latest, greatest, and the only thing we want to talk about, but uh, the Lord's going to help us. But I, I just do really believe that Father is saying, I want you to come into union with me. It's time that I'm opening the door. Jesus is actually opening the door. I think Jesus is actually revealing the Father. And uh, he said, now you guys, let's go in together. Je look at this. Jesus, arm in arm with us. Said, come on, let's go to the Father together. And uh, that's a, a fascinating and actually a very inspiring thought to me. It was a picture that I think needs more painting, needs more rhema by each of us. And, you know, in our discussions like today, uh, there were some crux things, uh, phraseologies and, and concepts that just had the juice of heaven on it. You know, us, as we're getting seasoned and established on how to flow together, learning how to stay where the juice is. And if Father's saying, look at me, then we'll just stay in that look at me posture.